Park Avenue Synagogue takes its musical tradition seriously, and the way we give expression to that, other than having the best cantors in the world, is uh, every year our cantors put together a CD, which you have on your seats. Um, every year celebrating some aspect of the Jewish musical tradition. Uh, this year, Heritage, the treasures of German Jewish composers, is a wink and a nod at the German Jewish heritage of this synagogue. And I want to congratulate Cantor Schwartz and the entire team and the music department for putting together this CD that honors our musical heritage. Park Avenue Synagogue was at its roots in 1882 um, composed of the German Jewish community that had emigrated here and that musical tradition coming over from Germany here into our community is much of what this CD is all about. Now Cantor, I'm about to impress you because the, why am I saying this now? Because uh, Sarnu that was just chanted by the choir and Colin upstairs was the Sarnu, is the Sarnu, as composed by Emanuel Kirshner, one of the greats of the um, German uh, community whose ultimate landing spot was in the Munich synagogue, I believe. Now Kirshner, Emanuel Kirshner, born in 1857, the third of 10 children, came from a very modest background. He worked his way through arriving in Berlin. And Berlin was then the seat of the most famous of all German cantors, who was Lewandowski. I'm not asking you. Um, <laughs> who was Lewandowski. Um, now Lewandowski, you might know, from his, um, his most famous is, is, well, I'm sure he has a lot of famous, but Colin, give me a, a few notes of Sadiq Katamar. Are you there, Colin? Okay, which we chant on Friday nights at the Berlin synagogue, the new synagogue in Berlin. Kirshner, so Lewandowski was like the LeBron James of his time, or, or if you will, the Ozzy Schwartz of his time. <laughs> Kirshner came to Lewandowski's shul and started out as bass in the choir. His big break, Kirshner's big break, came when eight days before Yom Kippur in 1879, the second chazan named Henry Wachimson um, fell ill and they needed a sub and Kirshner got the call up to the big leagues at that moment. Now, it gets even more interesting. Um, if you're a cantor, this is really interesting. Uh, um, Kirshner could never get over the slight that when Lewandowski retired from his position, um, Lewandowski did not put in a good word for Kirshner to get the main gig at the synagogue and he left his number two spot and went to become the main guy in Munich. Years later, um, they approached each other having long since retired um, and Kirshner came to visit his old boss, his old teacher, and the joy of the reunion was mixed with a sense of sadness that Lewandowski was at the end of his days. And Lewandowski asked Kirshner to sing um, 
his melodies. And Lewandowski said to him that no one could sing Lewandowski's melodies as well as Kirshner did. And Kirshner was asked by his teacher why he was so reserved towards him, to which the younger man answered to him, and this is all in, in the history books, he said, all your life, this is Kirshner to Lewandowski, you listened only to people with false tongues who wanted only favors from you. You, yet you misunderstood me because no false words, said Kirshner, found their way to my lips. And Lewandowski, at that moment, beat his chest and uttered one word, which was khatati, I have sinned. And so this fascinating moment, um, which actually leads us right to al Khet right here, um, of this relationship between the two greats of the German cantorial tradition, both of which um, are on this magnificent new CD celebrating our musical heritage. <laughs>